Good morning everyone and welcome to the second session. In this quarter end, it's going to talk about the accessory organs of the digestive system. And as I told you that we have the main organs of the digestive system and also we have accessory organs. So what's the main difference between them? The main organ is that with the organs where the food is going to pass through them. And the accessory organs is the organs where the food will not pass through them and only they are going to help or aid in digestion through what? Through secretion of chemical substances. So you have to know that we have four accessory organs. The first one is a salivary glands that secrete the saliva in your mouth and its primary dig digest the food chemically in your mouth. That's what we take in the last session. And the second one is the liver. And we are going to know how the liver is going to aid in digestion. Third is the gallbladder. And finally, the pancreas. Today, we are going to know each function of uh, each one of them and how it's going to help in digestion. The first one that we uh, take uh, last time is salivary glands and it produces the saliva that firstly lubricate the food by making it moist and also it has the amylase enzyme that breaks down the storage molecules of the carbohydrates into glucose. So this is how the salivary glands is going to secrete saliva that's going to aid in digestion. Second thing, the liver. The liver is releasing a mixture that's called bile and this bile is produced through the produced and synthesized inside the liver and this bile is used to help in the digestion of fat so just imagine that you have a piece of fat and you're just dropping uh, drops of boil it's going to disappear or it's going to be dissolved so the boil is used in the fat digestion and it's produced through the liver the liver is producing high amount of the liver of boil so it's going to be stored inside the gallbladder and it's going to be used when needed from the gallbladder so the liver is used to produce only the boil, but it's going to store it in the gallbladder. And the boil, what's the function of the boil is helping in fat digestion. And here's the third one, it's the gallbladder. The gallbladder, it's storing the boil produced by the liver to, to release it to the small intestine to help in chemical digestion. The care, you have to know, the shape and the anatomy of each organ. You have to know that the gallbladder is, is lying just below the liver and it's like green or yellowish green. And it's located just below the liver. The finally, the final accessory organ is the pancreas. As I told you in the class, if you know what's, what are the diabetic person, the diabetic person is the person that has insufficient insulin in his blood. And what's the in insulin or what's the function of insulin? Insulin is the hormone that's naturally found in your body. And this insulin is responsible for reducing the blood sugar level in the blood. So who secretes the insulin? The pancreas. Some patients have this function in the pancreas. It cannot release the enough insulin or it cannot release it at all so we have to take insulin from outside or take drugs that enhance the secretion of insulin so the pancreas is making fluids and uh, it's making the insulin so it's producing digestive enzymes to digest all types of food fat carbohydrate and protein and it regulates the blood sugar level by producing hormone that's called insulin also, you have to know the shape of the pancreas. It's a leaf life structure. Leaf life structure. Okay, so now we are talking about the phases of digestion, and this is very important to know. How many phases? There are five. Ingestion and means intake. Transport means the movement of the food along the peristalsis movement along the esophagus. 
and then it's going to mechanically and chemically be digested inside mainly the stomach sorry partially the stomach and mainly the small intestine finally absorption is going to done or to be happen inside the small intestine and finally elimination elimination is is transferring the unwaste the waste material and the unwanted product to stool to be excreted throughout the rectum okay you have to memorize the phases of digestion so this is the first step is ingestion what's ingestion it's intake of the food through the mouth secondly transport of this food along the esophagus through a movement that's called peristalsis thirdly third mechanical and chemical digestion in the stomach and in the small intestine as well finally absorption happens in the small intestine where all the neutrons and vitamins is going to go to the blood from the small intestine and the last one all the unwanted material is going to be excreted out of the body eliminated out of the body by the way elimination is the meaning of getting rid of or excreting okay what happens to the undigested food the large intestine removes the water it absorbs the vitamins and turn the food into waste called feces and feces means a stool there is a bacteria that's living in the large intestine that helps to break down the food which the body cannot use or cannot digest. The rectum is the end of the large intestine that stores the stool or the feces until they can be expelled out of the body. But you have to know that inside the large intestine there is two things. Goblet cell and mucus. What's goblet cell? The goblet cell is secreting mucus to lubricate the movement of food. The mucus is a slimy substances, also it's used to facilitate the movement of the food. Finally, we are going to talk about the disorders of the digestive system. We have three disorders of the digestive system. The first one is called gastroesophageal reflux. And gastro or gastric means the stomach, esophageal re- related to the esophagus, and reflux meaning of going back. So mainly gastroesophageal reflex is when you have, do you know the hydrogen, uh, the HCl, the hydrochloric acid, which is found in your stomach? When this hydrochloric acid, potent, strong acid is going back along your esophagus, is returning back to the esophagus, it's going to, to cause this gastroesophageal reflex. It's called acetic, acetic reflex and it's... It's causing heartburn. You are going to feel uncomfortable. You will have a burning pain. And this is mainly happen after eating a big fatty meal or spicy food. What's the symptoms of the heartburn? You are going to have a pain in the chest that worsens when lying down. A bitter or acidic taste in your mouth. So how we are going to treat this? The only thing that is going to change this, to treat this, is changing your lifestyle. Changing what you eat, what you drink. And also, you have to take some medicines. What's the change that you have to do inside uh, to change your lifestyle? To quit smoking, to avoid alcohol, to eat small meals, to avoid carbonated beverages, the soda, the Pepsi, the... All the, the canned products and also avoid the food that trigger reflexes that ch- such as the spices. Also, you can avoid lying down for three hours after the meal or eat two or three, two to three hours before going to the bed. So, this is for the gastroesophageal reflex. The second thing is called constipation. Constipation is not going to the toilet for almost two or three days. This is the hard, dry, and frequent stool that are very hard to pass. What's the causes? It may be drug that causes this. It may be age-related age changes. It may be inactivity. Okay, so what's the treatment? Laxative suppositories. These are suppository is a um, type of treatment that's used to facilitate the movement of the stool out of your large intestine. And... Enema, these all are going to soften your stool 
and increase the fluid and di dietary fiber so it's able to be excreted easily. The final thing is the peptic ulcer disease and ulcer means loss of tissue from the lining of the digestive tract and this may happen acute or chronic. Acute means for a short period of time and chronic may happen for a long period of time. What's the cause that can cause this drugs? Taking drugs without taking enough water. Stress can also cause peptic ulcer. Heavy alcohol can cause also. Infection of H. pylori bacteria also can cause the peptic ulcer disease. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoy the session.